All right, today I'm going to show you how to roll out your pecs and your delts with a big foam roller and a little mini foam roller. But first up is the pecs. Now, with a big foam roller, you need to get the corner of the foam roller right in the meat of the pec because that's the area that gets really, really tight after shoulder injuries. Like with my shoulder injury, with if you remember from the previous videos, I've got that bicep tendinopathy and tenosynovitis, which is heaps better, but I've got that big rotator cuff tear in here. Now, having that makes the whole deltoid compensate quite a bit and then the pec compensates because when you've got a shoulder injury, you tend to lose this sort of range, right? You lose that improvement there. So you start sort of staying inwards all the time, which makes all this tighten up. So that compounds the problem. So we're going to release it today and I'm going to show you how to do that, which will free you up into that position, help you with mobility help you reduce that stiffness pain so you can do your rehab exercises. So first up, get your foam roller. The trick with this is getting on the ground and getting into a position where the corner of the roller is on the meat of the pec. Now, I don't mean the front of the shoulder. So don't go on the ball of the shoulder where that bicep tendon is because that's gonna hurt, okay? There's no point doing that. We're trying to go for the pec, so it's right in here. Now you're gonna have to practice this a bit and hunt around until you get a few trigger points. So you have to come back and forth and try and find that area, and you go, okay, there it is, and then you put enough weight through it to sort of tack and pin that tissue down. And then what you're gonna try and do, depending on your range, you're trying to reach up, and as you reach up, because the foam roll is staying still, it drags the tissues, drags those soft tissues and fascia and muscle, and then you're gonna come down and do the same thing and pull down, but keep the weight down on that roller, okay? So weight on that roller, get it at the right angle, and just push through and back. So one way of doing it is pushing up and down, and you might have to readjust every now and again. So lift it up, get it on there, and go again. And then you can come outwards and swoop, depending on what your impingement's like, what your abduction's like, you might find there's some impingement there, so I would probably stay away from impingement, so you might need to bend your elbow and reach forward, that sort of thing, whatever suits to get you that release through the front. And I'd need to do that for about maybe, you know, four or five minutes of getting in there, finding different spots, changing positions, so after the four or five minutes, you've worked quite a little bit in there, and you've released off, and you'll find that you're, hopefully your range will improve that way, okay? Now, obviously, for females, you just gotta be careful where you put it, but you're aiming for the pick, sort of where that tendon part is, you're aiming for that chunk of the meat, not in here, not in the front, just in this part where most of that tightness lies, okay? Now, some people can't get on the front. They can't get down, they haven't got the range. So, what you can do is modify it a bit, do it up on a wall. So just do it near an open door, like this, and what I would do, foam roll on the wall, all right, and then you get in here, and same drill. Now, now I've got some range, so I can let it hang, like this, and I can get in there and push it around like this and move it around. Now, this is sort of easier for range of movement, but you've got to lift your arm. So if you've got a bit of a problem in the front where you can't lift your arm, you might find that a little bit hard. You might have to go on the ground. But this is definitely a good sort of modification for people, and especially I've got patients of mine who just simply can't, they haven't got the range, the external rotation range for the floor. So they get on here and they release it in here and get stuck. And I can drive in there and put some pressure through it and that will really help me loosen that up. And it's a really good one to do pre shoulder exercises. So see if that works for you. So for your deltoid release on the roller, you need a mini roller. So something like this. Now, these ones are really, really hard. They're a black roll, and they've got they're obviously hollow, but they're made of just really light foam. So really easy to travel with. Um, and I like these because they don't bend and buckle like a big foam roller. Now, the big foam roller, you sort of need that because you're putting your body weight through it. But here, there's much less weight going through it, and they need to be small and hard to be effective. So I would choose a wall, and you're going to aim for right on the side of the deltoid. Now, you'll move around, but we'll start on the side. And when you, if, if you start here like this, if you angle it and lean in and put a bit of weight through, you'll feel that already. Okay, so my body weight's going that way. I can push through my feet and drive a bit of pressure. So I can put as much pressure as I want through that to get me 
the relief or the pain that I want, the release in that tissues. And I just need to roll that very smallly up and down. So just, just going in little sections like this, trying to aim, if this is my acromion, I'm trying to aim for right on the edge to start with, because that's where the deltoid comes from. And it's nice releasing all that because that's where all the pain is sort of in the tightness tends to come from mostly is the top part in there and you'll find that you know the rotator cuff interval is right underneath so it's a really nice area to release so that's a really good section to start with then what you can do is drop it down to maybe where the insertion point is try and find the trigger points so you might have to sort of roll in try and find one, and then roll up and down and then you'll hit it and you and that's where you need to just sort of pancake that out of it without bruising it and you can definitely also go around the back find the rear delt get stuck into that up and down and release that. Now get a good five minutes on that, just trying to work around all parts of the deltoid. I wouldn't bother trying to smash the front of, you know, if you can come to the anterior deltoid, but just be careful of that long head of bicep tendon because if it's inflamed, you're just gonna make it aggravated by bashing it, okay? So work on your deltoid rather than anything else. Now, the big thing, important thing about releasing this deltoid, not just because it helps you with pain and release, but if you give your deltoid very, very tight, what tends to happen in your mechanics, if you're, when your ball is in your socket, if you, when you raise your arm, if your deltoid's tight and a bit spasmy, it's a bit dysfunctional when it comes up and it can ride up and jam your shoulder. So when you get impingement and you've got a stiff, tight deltoid that's got a lot of spasm, that sort of amplifies your impingement. So releasing it may even improve some of your mechanics inside the shoulder, which will help the rotator cuff control that ball a little bit better you get less functional impingement, which helps the whole thing, allows you to do your rehab, and that's what it's all about. So get stuck in, release your pecs, big roller, release your delts, small roller. See you next time.